because of your work and your writing, I think a lot of people assume that they know what you were like as a child, what your childhood was like, as painful as it was. Do they, do they really know what your childhood was like, what you, what Maya was like as a child? Well, they would have to, I think, um, have been violated, have been uh, uh, molested. <coughs> And then uh, had the person killed. I mean, the person who did the rape, in my case, was killed. And the police came to my maternal grandmother's house while I was on the floor playing a game with my brother. And you were eight years old. I was eight. By that time, I was about seven and a half. And... <clears throat> The policeman told my grandmother, within my hearing, that the man had been found dead, and it seemed he'd been kicked to death. It so startled me. It traumatized me. I decided not to speak. Then my voice might just go out and kill people around me. <clears throat> so I stopped speaking for six years. Um, you communicated with Bailey, my brother, with your brother, yeah. didn't you? Occasionally. Yes. Yeah. Occasionally. But he was my heart. I, mean, I knew I, I loved him too much. It wouldn't hurt. I couldn't hurt him. My voice could not hurt him. But even with him, I was, you know, oft times, uh, I mean, months would go by, and I wouldn't speak. But... Some years passed, years and years. <coughs> I wrote all the time. And, uh, Why? Why did you write? Well, because I read. Um, a black lady in my town took me to the library. It was a black school, high school. I mean, the school was from kindergarten. There was no kindergarten. Sixth grade to the tenth or eleventh. <coughs> she took me there took me to the library, and she said, I want you to read all the books in this place. Start at A, and I'll come back and see you when you get to B-R. <laughs> so I did. I read every book in the place. It seemed vast. I know now that just one of the libraries in my home has more books than that. But it seemed vast. I don't say I understood everything, but I read everything. And I found I loved poetry. And I loved the poetry in the church. I loved to hear, I still do, to hear black ministers speak in that imagery and that melodic, mellifluous uh, cadence and, and rhythm. I'm, I'm still enchanted all these years later. So... So you read all of those books? Uh, I read everything, yes. And then Mrs. Flowers, her name was, uh, had some contact with the white school. She didn't live in Stamps. She had a house in Stamps. She lived in Little Rock. But um, she would come about every three or four months to the village, and she would come up the road carrying arms of books. And she was so beautiful. She was very black, that beautiful color, that dusky brown black that looks if you put your finger, it would peel. <laughs> oh, God. She was, and she spoke like that. You know, the way old Southern black ladies, I mean, I'm old Southern black lady. I don't speak like that. But <clears throat> like Dr. Dorothy Height, oh, yes, my dear. Oh, <laughs> all the plums in her voice. <laughs> she'd come up and she said, My dear, I have books for you. These are all for you. You may come and see me at tea time. And she'd make tea cookies and read to me. So I just read everything and wrote poetry, voluminous uh, albums <laughs> and, and journals. The worst poetry, East of the Rockies. <laughs> but I wrote it.
Is, is, is Miss Flowers the one who, who uh, I read that she said that poetry is music for the voice? She told me that. So That's wonderful. how she started me to reading again. At 12 and a half, when I was 12 and a half, I had a little tablet, which, uh, like a penny tablet, a nickel tablet. And my grandmother took her pocket knife, she called it, and made a groove in a number two pencil, tied a string into that groove, and another string into the spindle of the tablet. So I communicated totally with this I just wrote. So Mrs. Flowers had me at her house, and she had made tea cookies about that big, and the house was redolent with the, with the aroma of vanilla and little cinnamon or mace. And she said, you do not like poetry. Oh, my dear, no, you do not. You will never love it. I wrote, yes, ma'am, I do. She wouldn't look at my tablet. First time in five years, almost. She said, you will never like it. No, you will never. Until you feel it come across your tongue, through your teeth, over your lips, you will never love poetry. Ah, oh, I thought she was taking my dearest friend. So I ran from her. And my grandmother owned the only black-owned store in the town. So Mrs. Flowers had to come there from time to time. She'd come down. She and my grandmother were contemporaries. And she would point at me in front of Mama. Now, that's really bad manners to point at a person. You know, black people say, don't put your finger in my face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can take many things, but don't. She pointed at me in front of Mama, who I thought was God, really. Mm -hmm. She said, you'll never like it. Never, 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 no. She harassed me for about six months. And finally, I went under the house to see if I could sustain, because even talking to Bailey, I would just say something, little bitty things. I had voice. I had left my voice. My voice hadn't left me.